Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Following protracted negotiations between city officials and taxi association leaders, the city of Johannesburg last month rolled out the second phase of the Rear Via Bus Rapid Transit System in Johannesburg. Natalie Grieve has the story. The launch of the 1.7 billion rand Phase 1B, which will operate on a dedicated lane between Noordgezicht Station in Soweto and Ellis Park Station in Doornfontein, came shortly after the conclusion of an equitable deal that will see the remuneration of public transport operators affected by the introduction of an alternative public transport system. While city officials would not elaborate on the nature or extent of this remuneration, City of Johannesburg Executive Mayor Parks Tau said at the launch that the in-principle agreement had outlined a business model that allowed former bus and taxi operators to be redeployed within the Rear Via system, effectively running the second phase from May next year. The agreement is therefore very significant. It continues to underscore the role of the city in public transport and black economic empowerment and transformation in very innovative ways. Despite a tough and bumpy road, the primary environment and the discussions avoided confrontation and an impasse which may have easily led to conflict and instability. I heartily con congratulations to all those involved, in particular the negotiation teams from Top 6, PATCO and the City of Johannesburg. Tao explained that the BRT system was aimed at dismantling spatial segregation and enabling residents in the urban periphery to gain access to facilities and institutions within the city's commercial hubs. It also formed part of the city's larger Corridors of Freedom initiative, which aimed to develop well-planned transport arteries linked to interchanges dedicated to mixed-use development, such as high-density accommodation, supported by office buildings, retail development and recreation sites. In May this year, during the State of the City Address, I announced sweeping changes to the Johannesburg urban landscape. These included the introduction of high-density residential developments, which is already underway within an area dubbed as, or the area dubbed as the new corridors of freedom. The approach is aimed at dismantling the apartheid segregation concept in which the black majority of our residents were confined in townships far away from economic opportunities. Supporting the developments, we said, will be new transport arteries which will bring communities closer to workplaces, schools, and places of leisure. Today's launch of the Rear Via Phase 1B is therefore a realization of that announcement. It is one of the 100 billion rents infrastructure investment program over the next 10 years that, and represents a decisive move away from private vehicle use towards public transport, bicycle routes and pedestrian walkways. Users of the second phase route would be able to access key public hospitals such as Rahima Musa, private hospitals such as Park Lane Clinic, as well as educational institutions including the University of the Witwatersrand or WITS. 13 new rear via stations were built along the 93km route, which is expected to carry 134 buses and up to 60,000 commuters a day. The trunk route service is further supported by complementary bus services, which start on end routes in mixed traffic but join the trunk route at a later stage, and feeder bus services, which start in mixed traffic and end at a rear via station. The new bus routes will be an important support to Joburg's spatial master plan and campaign to transform entrenched apartheid settlement patterns and create a vibrant middle-class environment where everyone can feel safe. It will also enable us to achieve our vision of an integrated public transport system for Johannesburg, linking the Riavaya bus rapid transit system, metro rail and Gauteng. Construction on the third phase of the Rio Via BRT system is set to start next year and will see the construction of a dedicated bus lane and service from Witz to the Santon Gar train station. 
Other news making headlines this week, plans are underway to grow South Africa's biogas industry. The development of Africa's maritime sector is to be prioritized and DAF aims for an 8 to 10 percent market share. The successful implementation of a biogas to energy plant at the city of Johannesburg's Northern Wastewater Treatment Works has sparked plans to roll out the technology to other energy intensive wastewater works in South Africa's most populous province. Once we've refurbished the uh, digesters, um, we then will be in a position to produce more biogas because that's, that's what you want to do. The more biogas you produce, the more electricity you can produce and that's, that's what we're going to do. By, by, by refurbishing the, the, the digesters, um, we will then be in a position to put in bigger engines, which will be 880s, and, and the idea is to, to, um, to produce almost 60% of our needs. So if you take 8.8 .8 megawatts, we want to produce 60% of that. Africa is starting to see the maritime industry as a key strategic sector and its development will be prioritized in future. African Union Commission Chairperson Dr Nkosa Sanad Lamini Zuma said at the inaugural Africa Maritime in Daba in Santon. It's a, it's a multifaceted uh, strategy obviously. Um, I don't think you can say you start here but there are many areas where which need to be attended to. As I said in my speech, you need to attend to skills, because if there are no skills, then you'll not be able to run. You need to attend to the laws to harmonize. You need to attend to uh, the transport. Who owns the transport? I you heard that uh, there is a very strong voice about owning vessels that transport our goods. So that's an area that needs attention. Babcock aims to accelerate DAF's heavy-duty vehicle market share from between 1 and 2 percent currently to between 8 and 10 percent within the next four years, says Babcock Africa Division CEO Roger Callaghan. Today we've got 21 dealerships around the country. We own brand new purpose built dealerships in Benoni, Middleburg and Durban. We're opening our own Durban uh, Cape Town dealership by the end of the year and we have aspirations to have another up to about 30 by this time next year. Within the next four years to be between 8 and 10 percent market share. This year we, we're looking at, at the ATE which stands for Advanced Transport Efficiency which really is about taking the whole package of the truck and giving you efficiencies both with loads, with cents per kilometers. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.